Hey everyone, this is Saptashi here and I welcome you back to our course on machine learning using Python. So today we are going to look at linear discriminant analysis which is popularly known as LDA. Okay, and we are at the hands-on session. We'll do the hands-on in the Kaggle environment. So this will be available as a public notebook. So you can actually change the code, run as many experiments as you want and see the result by yourself. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. What LDA does is it creates a linear combination of the original features or attributes that are there in the data. Okay, so if you have original features like x1, x2 and x3, a linear component can be created like LD1 which is 0.5 into x1 plus 0.2 into x2 plus 0.3 into x3. Okay, how many such linear components can be there? See if I have n classes, such components will be n minus 1. If I have 10 classes, linear components will be 9. All right. So you might think that this sounds very similar to principal component analysis or PCA because that also creates linear combination of original features. So what's the difference? So PCA tries to create components such that the components creates maximum variability. Whereas LDA creates components such that the classes are well separated. All right. So let's go ahead and now start by doing some housekeeping of importing our regular libraries like NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, a few things from SKLR, datasets, PCA discriminant analysis, and also these colors so that we can, uh, you know, see or visualize our graphs better. So let's run this. Like every time, our session is organized around five questions. First, we'll pick the iris data and we will apply LDA and look at the effect or we'll learn how to fit LDA on iris data. Then we will try to understand that how LDA and PC are different again with context to iris data. We will look at how LDA can also be used as a classifier tool, not only as a dimension reduction tool on iris data set. Next, we'll move on to MNIST, which is a much larger data set. And we will try to look at, you know, different things like classification visualization on MNIST. Finally, very briefly, we'll try to see that can we kind of combine LDA and PCA. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so our first question is how we fit LDA on IRIS data. So let's start by loading our iris data set so you know it is available in data sets so once we use this load iris method i can get the data or the independent variable in iris.data and the class in iris.target okay so let me run this so if you remember x is now a numpy array a 2d array okay so which has got you know, four elements in each of the rows. So these are your independent variables. And if you look at Y, okay, so Y actually has values 0, 1, and 2 because there are three classes. Now let's see how do I fit LD on IDs. Okay, so I simply call linear discriminant analysis. This is already imported. I have used only one attribute in components equal to 2. This is also not required because as number of classes is 3, it will automatically assume number of components will be 2. Then what we do is we do a LDA.fit on X and Y. So X is your input, Y is your output. Please remember that Y is required because this is supervised. And then we, we do a transform. Okay. So transform means actually we create this, you know, this linear combinations now out of the original features. So let me run this, okay? So if now, if you look at X, okay? So the elements are 5.1, 3.5, 1.4, 0.2 5, like that. Now, if you run here, X R2, now look at what happens. So now if you see that number of elements are two. So this is where dimensionality reduction is happening, right? So from four features, you are coming down to two features, okay? Now, if you remember that out of this 
class separability variance how much is each linear discriminant component describes or explains so that is available in lda dot explain variance ratio at like principal component the first one will explain more percentage so this total will be 100 and actually this means the first linear component explains 99.12 percent of the variability okay now so this is about uh, how we can fit just do it let's just do a scatter plot and see how the classes are well separated so if you look at this so you see that okay in in uh, terms of this these two linear components the classes are quite well separated okay so this is how lda can be applied on iris data let's go to the next question which is how lda and pca varies on iris data set okay so let's do by fitting principal component okay so in components we are taking as four so four is the maximum because there are four features all right However, LDA you cannot go beyond uh, you, you cannot go beyond two features, right? LDA is already created, so we are not fitting it again. So first, what we are going to do is we are just going to visualize this using scatter plots vis a vis. So one scatter plot we are going to look at uh, the principal components, another we are going to look at linear and discriminant components, and the classes will be marked in different colors. So this will help us to understand how separable these representations are so the top one is pca and if you think maybe uh, this one uh, this one this class is well separated but among these two lda is separating them better than pca right so as you know that lda focuses more on class separability however what we do now is we are going to create a data frame where we'll keep the first two linear discriminant components and the first two principal components as well, okay? So let's take this and what we are going to do is we are going to look at the box plot of, of this uh, linear discriminant components first, okay? So this is the box plot and you can see that as your LD1 represents maximum class separability when we plot against ld1 these classes are well separated so this each box corresponds to one of the classes okay whereas if you look at ld2 the classes are you know quite mixed up okay you can understand why it is because second ld only only represents some percentage less than one of the class separability okay we can compare across main linear discriminant null, uh, main dis linear discriminant component main principal component again using box plot so let's run this okay and if you look at the box plot the first one is ld1 so again you can realize that this ld1 has created more well separated classes than pc1 okay so this is where the difference between principal component and linear discriminant component is Okay. So now let's look at how LDA can be worked as a classifier. Okay. So we do our regular trend test split and then what we do is we do a LDA dot fit. Okay. So you remember how we fit a classifier on testing data. We just use LDA dot predict or the classifier dot predict. Okay. And then we simply calculate the classification accuracy score. Okay. So if you run this we get a classification accuracy of 97.36%, so which is a good accuracy on iris data set, okay? So this is how LDA not only can be used as a dimensional reductionality tool, but it can also be used as a classifier, okay? Now, let's look at how we can use LDA on MNIST data. So MNIST, if you remember, is a quite large data set, which has 10 classes and several rows, okay? And each of the rows actually has 784 features because, you know, each, uh, each row is actually a 28 into 28 matrix, okay, 28 into 28 matrix, so it turns out to be 784. So if I look at one of the rows, okay, 
the first row basically so it has got 785 columns so the first one is level which is your target frame and rest 784 are your input variable okay so now let's do this thing let's uh, create x train and y train okay so this is your first column and rest of the columns will go to your independent variables so at first uh, we are just going to fit our LD. okay we have used number of components as nine again just for our interpretability we cannot go beyond number of components equal to nine as number of classes is 10. so we are using lda and then we are doing a fit and transform so the components are getting created and then original features are getting transformed as well okay so if we just do fit the features doesn't get converted by on its own so now if i look at x train r2 the most important thing that you will notice is that your array size is reduced drastically so from 784 features you have come down to nine which is around 1% of the original features, right? So this is kind of magic about LDA, okay? All right, so let's look at the explained variance, uh, explained variance ratio. So this is not like PCA, where the first component was explaining 99%. Here, the first component explains around 23.9%, then 20.1%, the tw then 17.84, then and so on and so forth. Next, what we want to do is, we want to look at how this can be visualized. So if I, one of the things of LDA was also visualization, you have 784 features, so you cannot visualize, right? So if I use the first two linear, uh, you know, discriminant components, and then we actually run a scatter plot, maybe we can get some representation. However, it represents only 44% of the variability. Let's still run and also let's do this thing, you know, just to just to establish the superiority of this linear discriminant components that if I pick any two original features, okay, and I plot the classes, if we mark the classes in different colors, how these two scatter plots will look like, uh, you know, against one another. So let's run this and, you know, uh, so essentially what we are doing over here is we are uh, plotting the two scatter plots. So these are your original features and different color circles means that they belong from different digits. Okay. So even using two, these two linear discriminant components, if you see uh, the classes are quite, quite less mixed up. All right. The, you can see that 0 is well separated. You can also see maybe 8 is well separated. Maybe 6 is well separated. However, you can also see there is some overlap in 8 and 9. But, but this appears to be completely random. Okay. So now let's see another visualization. So here we have picked the first two linear components, right? Which, uh, you know, explains the maximum variability. So if I instead use the last two linear uh, components and compare with the first two linear discriminant components, how this should look like, okay? So if I go down, I, I will expect that it will definitely be less random than picking the original feature. So yes, it is less random, okay? However, it is much more mixed up than uh, using the first two linear discriminant components, right? So this is where, you know, this, these two linear discriminant components are far superior, okay? Now, let's also look at the accuracy that we can achieve on the MNIST data set. So for that, we are going to use this X test and Y test that comes from a separate CSV file. Here, we don't need to do the train test split. Now, let's just, you know, use and find the accuracy score. One interesting thing is that you can actually use LDA.predict on the original feature space itself. So it takes care of the transformation and on the transformation, then it tries to predict, okay? So the prediction accuracy comes to 87.3%. Uh, considering it is a 10 class problem, it is not too bad. And also considering that it uses only nine features 
instead of the 784 original features. Okay, this is a small example where we are trying to combine LD and PCA. So what we do is we again load iris. Okay, we set up our X and Y, and then we first fit LDA with number of components equal to two. Then we fit PCA with number of components equal to four. Now what we are going to do is we are going to do a very interesting visualization. So first we are going to look at the scatter plot of PCA. Okay. So we take the first two principal components. In LDA, we take the next two linear discriminant components. And the last one, what we do is we take one principal component and one linear discriminant component. Okay. So let's run this and see how this scatter plot looks like. Okay, so if you look at the scatter plots, you will see that, you know, uh, PCA, yes, you know, uh, it is uh, it is quite interesting, okay. Uh, it is not uh, so well separated as LDA, but if you look at PCA and LDA, you will see that classes are much more well separated and, you know, in PCA, only this axis separates them, right. However, if you look at LD and PCA, both the axes are well separating them. Okay, so this is something which can be uh, can be a hint for or cue for your further work where you can experiment by combining and mixing and matching with different transformation components. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our notebook. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please put it. If you find it helpful, please like and subscribe. This will be very, very motivating for us. Thank you so much.